to our show, Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. I'm Josh May. And we have a uh, we have a great show for you guys today. That's better. That's better, yeah. So, um, can you tell us? Uh, hey, Ace, and that's Asaf. He was playing a little song by James Brown. Could you elaborate yeah, it's a little called, more? Uh, I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of that song. So this is a little piano version I came up with. I liked that song a lot when I was a little you know, kid. Yeah, I saw him in concert once. This was years and years wow. ago. And what was interesting about this concert is, you know, he would always cry on stage and a guy would come out with a cape. <laughs> it was all staged, obviously. Oh, it was yeah. a lot of fun to watch, so. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Yeah, I remember when I was a little kid, I would I would sing, I feel good. Yeah. yeah I, I think everybody's saying, I feel good, if they're especially having a good day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Well, <laughs> if you if you're hearing my voice, I'm kind of sniffling. I'm a little sick today, and Noel McAvoy is not here today, so there's no L today. No L. No L. She's in yeah. Idaho. She's in Idaho. Yeah. In a cabin by a lake in the woods. I should just call her straight up tonight. Hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what's in store for the show today? Just today I'm going to start off with a little thing called um, our little webcam, and here's our webcam, right? Oh. Yep, there it is. And this is a nice shot of downtown Missoula. And you can see this is on Spruce and Higgins. And I'm going to close this out before it yells at me. So right here is our daily forecast. And it's going to be 51. I mean, it's not 51. It's 51 right now. So it's nice and chill. I yeah. walked to work today like I always do. Nice and chill. Unfortunately, it's going to be thunderstorms, but a high of 78. Nice. So it's going to be great. <laughs> High 78, it's gonna be great. And, you know, chance of thunderstorm, of course, you know, it's 20% chance of thunderstorm, so I would say that it's gonna be a really nice day, gonna be fairly chill. It rained last night, it was got all wet last night. Yeah. And um, tomorrow it's gonna rain, there's a 60% chance of rain, and it's gonna definitely try to rain um, Friday, Saturday. So it's gonna rain all the, way, all the way through the weekend. So as you can see, all those little rain graphics, and you see, oh look, there's little cars and traffic so if you guys are traveling just before school starts be aware that it's gonna rain cats and dogs yeah you don't want a hydroplane <laughs> yo hydroplane hydroplane it's a good word <laughs> that's the uh, hashtag hydroplane hydroplane yep and we'll put it right on our Twitter page and there's our Twitter page right there hashtag hydroplane hydroplane I'm just gonna do it right now do it um, hashtag how do you spell hydro H Y D R O P L A N E. Is it like, okay, hashtag hydroplane. Boom! I tweeted. Yeah. Tell us what you think about that. Tweet on our fit tweet page. Yeah, Twitter tweet on page. our um, tweeted. Tweeter. <laughs> yep. And then and we got our Facebook, Facebook page. page. Which is the same Can't forget about all of our other Facebook page. We have great Facebook stuff. We show all the videos that we showed here on our show. Basically, all we're basically showing for today. It's mostly our, um, just our show. Yeah. We, we do have a lot of videos, and I do Sometimes have um, some videos from the Boys and Girls Club. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, let's check those out. Yeah, this is long, but I'm going to show um, the first a movie, followed by a trailer, and then I think I'm going to end my segment with a little, um, some PSAs. Cool. So I'm going to keep it really short and brief, but because I'm sniffling so much, I want to stop talking. So this one, I'll set it up. So the setup is zombie movie, and it's with a bunch of kids who are aged six through eight. Wow. And I think they did a lot better than the last, um, the older kids, because they are committed. They were committed, They're committed yeah. to roughhousing and I was there. having an excuse to tackle each other, and yeah. it was great. And they were really committed when it came to being a zombie. So without further ado, I present Bloody Zombie. Yeah, it's 
garlic. We just have to figure out a way to kill those darn zombies. I have an idea. That was that. Wow. You know, <laughs> Those kids love zombie movies. Oh I'll yeah, tell you what. or monster movies or stuff like that. I'm all caught up, so I only have we only have two more boys and girls clamp for the rest of the week. Yeah, and it's like the best my best birthday present ever. No more summer camps. Now then, against this kid, I've just done. Oh man, done like a lot this 10, 10, 11 summer camps. Wow. One, yeah, just. Just kill me. I'm out. just helping out this week because Noel's gone and Sam's not here, so yeah, well, Sam's not doing it or whatever. But yeah, he was here last week heavily. Um, so yeah, Josh is gonna be helping me yeah. today with a lot of the kids from the boys and girls club, and he's gonna take the lead because I'm just all crapped out. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we'll do a zombie movie again. I'm not sure. Kids love zombies. I'm. I might try to put it somewhere else. Might try to. You can do a um. <clears throat> PSA. PSA, that'd be cool. Oh, we can do a PSA about, hey, Boys and Girls Club, hey, they're A-OK. -okay. Yeah, or making movies or something. Nope. Maybe, there's a lot of zombie stuff going around, so. But as you know, um, besides zombie movies, MCAT is a cable provider that offers 
um, Missoula community, the Missoula community a voice in terms of television medium, and we are changing our channel. Yes. So we're going to be changing from channel 7 and 11 to channel 189 and 190. So basically, it's the end of analog. It's well, the end of analog. And a lot of the controversy that's going on here in Missoula specifically is about the boxes. Uh -huh. It's just like, you need a box for every, every single cable outlet. So you know how you have the wall, the, you, know, the, you know the wall jack? Yes. The, where you hook in the F cable that hooks into the television? Yes. So apparently, if you're going to watch any cable whatsoever on any TV in the house, you're going to have to have multiple ones for the um, multiple televisions. Yeah, yeah. So one box per television. Yeah. Which I, is... Uh, it's going to be complicated. It's yeah. Complicated. It's going to be free the first year, and then after that, ooh, Charge is going to be making a lot of money. Because you have to buy... So, like, I wonder what the public schools are going to do to get all Public schools cable. are another big thing as well, because if they're going to have to have a cable box for every classroom, and every pretty much every single teacher says that they use cable on their television. Yeah. Are so they they're going to have, have to get rid of... get a box for every classroom. They might have to That's get rid of the lot. TV completely. Huh. Or ch choose a, a subscriber that, you know... Doesn't carry the box, doesn't yeah. require the box. Mm-hmm. But Interesting. But, yeah, just have the, they just, you know, there has to be a good solution. Even the city of Missoula is um, talking to them as well. So that's going to be um, um, be going on for the next month or so. But for right now, I'm going to show you a bunch of PSAs, three PSAs in a row, talking about the challenge change made by our very own Christian Ackerman and Dylan Albans, who is moving back to Bozeman to go back to college at the... Um, Montana the, State. No, I don't want, don't say that. What? It's not. No, it's just don't say that word. Why? It's Grizz Nation. We're, we're Grizz talking about Grizz. Okay. I'm sorry, but. He's just going back to school. Yes, yeah, so you're going back to school in a place that um, is not that great. Okay. We don't have a Bozeman audience. Anyways, so here's a little um, stin bit about our channel change, and after this, we'll have a phoner. Cool. It has changed! Where is MCAT Channel 7 and 11? Batman, that's why I called you here. MCAT's changing their channels to 189 and 190. Are you joking me? No, I'm Commissioner Gordon. The Joker jokes. We've been banished from the other channels. No, we're just moving to channels 189 to 190. Do you have a cough drop? Uh, yeah, maybe I can something. Thank you, Batman. When you see MCAT Channel 711 change the channels 189 to 190, you're going to see some serious stuff. Stuck. Uh, are you telling me that MCAT Channel 711 is going to be Channel 189 and 190? Precisely. That's heavy. Great Scott! Wait, wait! Ah! MCAT channel 711 is becoming channel 189 and 190? That's impossible! Hey, welcome back. We are here with Alan Goddard and he's talking about the Roxy Theater. So tell us what's going on. They're having a French film uh, called Stranger at the Lake tonight, Wednesday, at 8 o'clock. And it's the first of the so-called out series, but it's a remarkable French thriller. It's uh, uh, a prize winner from many film festivals, and it's about a cruising ground where gay guys go in France and are stalked by a serial killer. Uh -huh. So with the typical French ingenuity, it has uh, suspense and has been likened to the best of Alfred Hitchcock. It's called the best French film in 20 years. Huh. Wow. And um, how long, I mean, so it's the very first premiere of a series of movies um, um, highlighting um, the LGBT community? That's it. All right. And uh, it, it's a, a cultural kind of, uh, I don't know what you call it. Do you have to sort of understand what's happening in the gay world to uh, know what's, why there is uh, such a movement towards same-sex marriage and so on. But this film is, is uh, uh, a scary, sexy delight 
it's definitely not for the kids. <laughs> so, um, could you tell me about um, when and where um, these movies are going to be happening? Well, uh, this is the first one in, uh, with the people at the Roxy, which is a community theater, uh, have just decided to see how uh, the public reacts to it, and how, whether or not there is an audience for this kind of film. But the next thing up that's really remarkable is The Normal Heart, which is uh, a, a big sensation in New York and has been on HBO, and it's going to be a benefit for the Open AIDS Alliance. Great. Wow. Um, so, th and that's so this is about month. cool. And this is going to be going on. You know, this is its first week, so um, they kind of have an idea of having it going on every Wednesday night. No, I, it, it, it won't be every Wednesday night. They have they have a wide community that they serve. They're not just going to serve the the gay community, but people. Help them. All kinds of people will enjoy this movie. It's not just a gay movie. It's a suspense thriller. Right. I have a question. So yeah, yeah. So what time period? Like, is this set during the '90s, the '80s? When is this set? The movie. Uh, 2010. Oh, okay. And so it's based on it's based on uh, a true series of crimes in Europe. Oh in wow. France. So, so you, that's why that's why you were saying sort of all the political stuff was going on with gay marriage and and whatnot, right? Or this is set in France, so was it? Is it? Is France? France is more progressive than the United States, so. What? Well, they have a different attitude about yeah. things. I mean, they're they're much more open about nudity, for instance. There's a lot of nudity in this film. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, viewer discretion is advised for people going to this movie, but in um, it's a very artsy film that talks about um, you know the um, the issues of that the gay community faces every day, right? Well, yeah. This is this is this is not a, a thing about gay marriage. This is just a thing about the hazards of gay life in France, and I guess anywhere where. There's cruising and uh, somebody who has a, uh, uh, what they call a homophobic, a hate uh, reaction and stalks these people. Okay. okay, so one more time one more time before we go, tell me um, um, what time, what the movie is and what time it starts tonight. The movie is The Stranger by the Lake and it starts at 8 o'clock at the Roxy Theater. And it's this it a single showing that won't be repeated. And people who like suspense thrillers and French films will really find it fascinating. Very cool. Well, thanks for joining us, Alan. Well, thanks for having me, Scott. Mm -hmm. Stay out of trouble if you can. <laughs> I'll try. All right. Have Alrighty. a good day. All right. Bye now. Bye. All right. So um, while we transition into a Josh segment, we're going to leave a little thing with... Um, Hey, Asaph, you have a song for us? Sure. A familiar song called The Girl from Ipanema. And who wrote that? You know, I really don't know. That's a song from, I think it goes back into the 60s. Yeah, it's crazy how like a lot of old, really popular songs, mm -hmm. it's just like, it's just like, it, it's really struggles. It's like, I always had the same problem. I can't remember the <laughs> artist who wrote it, but I know all the songs. I, uh, a lady named Astrid Gilberto, I think, is the lady who made it famous back in the 60s with Stan Getz Orchestra. Wow. Cool. So we're switching gears here, and we're going to talk a little bit about 
City Council. Yeah, City Council. So um, the main issue of the day for City Council was replacing a ladder truck, but there was one comment that I thought was very interesting. It was from Ed Childers, and he's talking about the nude bike ride. So let's let's the bear as you dare. Bear ride. as you dare. Yeah. So uh, let's listen to his comment about that. Someone should say something. Um, we had a nude bike ride I hear, and uh, I read that there were uh, over 300 participants, and I thought I'd mention that that was even a larger number than the number of people who were in this chambers to say it was an awful thing to do. So we have people on all sides of every issue. Okay. So I thought that was interesting because, as you remember from the week before, yes. there's was, there was a booked house, but... It, apparently there was more people who were actually in the bike ride than people yep. at a And it wasn't necessarily a completely naked bike ride. There were a lot of people naked, but then there were people who still wore clothes. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, they they just wore pants or underwear. Yeah, so it was kind of like an eccentric bike ride. Yeah, so bare as you dare. So bare as you dare, yeah. You know, if you want to be bare, if you want to wear just socks, by all means. So here's uh, Missoula City Fire Chief Jason Deal talking about uh, what he thinks is an emergency um, and he's just talking about what needs to be replaced with right. the fire ladder. So let's listen to Jason D. Good evening. Um, as most of you are aware, uh, going back to 2009, uh, either myself or Chief Painter has been coming in here whining to you guys about uh, replacing that 1990 ladder truck. Um, and uh, so we've been, you know, that's been our, in a nutshell, it's been our number one priority for a long time. And um, every other year it gets a uh, UL inspection. And um, we have two ladder trucks. Uh, this year the 1990 Baker was up for uh, UL inspection. And typically we do, when it is inspected, we have um, various deficiencies noted. Um, but this year uh, was a, a significant issue um, that led me to pull the, the ladder truck out of service. Um, it was a material loss to the boom section, which is basically the structure of the tower. And okay, approximately... So Chief Jason Deal talking about the boom section. And then here's a quote from him again. So pretty much straight up he's talking about, okay, we need a new fire engine, straight up. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't had a new fire engine since 1990. 90s. And here's, here's, a, here's a, a quote where he basically says, this is an emergency. Right. Um, it's, a, it's a critical piece of equipment that, um, to, in my opinion, does rise to the level of an emergency for Missoula. Because if, if the ladder truck we have right now broke down tonight, uh, Missoula would not have that capability. Um, so the first option I looked at was maybe we could rent. Yeah, that was basically him saying, this is an emergency. Um, the next soundbite we have is uh, the mayor saying basically what they're going to be authorizing tonight. So let's listen to Mayor John Ingen. Move forward um, to secure financing to get this deal done. We think um, ballpark figures, we think um, we've got a... Um, a bond payment of, of roughly seventy sixty five to seventy thousand dollars unless that's changed chief a year on, on the financing for this right it's ninety five ninety five and that's over twelve years but um, finance is working over maybe a longer period to yeah, lower so, that payment. so we were we were anticipating about twenty year financing which would put us between sixty five and seventy we can manage we can manage these payments um, until such time as um, we uh, pass either special district or GO bond and what your next action will be um, basically we're borrowing from ourselves and will we repay ourselves through either the special district or the bonding mechanism um, okay. this is That's not mayor John Ingen, and he's just talking and about he's bringing up that special district bond that still um, ha um, is still up for election coming up in November. Yeah. So yes. that's, that's the big bond that they're going to be promoting, the fire fire trucks. Fire trucks coming. and police force. Police officers. It's, it's, it's a general all-around public safety. Yeah. Safety. And here's Adam Hertz basically saying, can we take
tailor this to just the fire truck. So let's listen to Adam Hertz. And I'm not in support of the special district, but I wonder um, if the administration has thoughts on a narrowly tailored special district uh, designed um, to encompass um, buildings that, for the most part, would see benefit from ladder trucks uh, that may include the university, um, the downtown area, or you know larger buildings in town. Um, special district requirements are pretty open. Um, I think building square footage is even uh, a usable means of um, determining uh, how much folks in special districts would pay. And I just wonder, um, I think the public would be more in support of a special district that was narrowly tailored uh, rather than including single family homes that may not necessarily see benefit from a ladder truck and wonder if that might be a consideration in the future. Okay. So that's Adam Hurt saying maybe uh, we should tax the buildings that actually need a 100 foot ladder. Right. Uh, well, you know, I saw like a little, um, I want to hear some statistics. Like on average, which, how many, um, how many years does it take to replace uh, a fire engine in a city just as big as Missoula? Just like, we can use like Billings or Bozeman as an example. Um, if we knew exactly how many years it took to replace it, because apparently this is a 1990 fire truck, yeah, and it's 2014. It is. So that means it's actually 25 years old, because anything that was 1990 is always like, you just bump it up a year because it, it came out. Usually any car that comes out that is, like the new 2015 cars are coming out in September, so it's coming up. So yeah, it's 25 years old now. I think they've been trying to replace it for years now too. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know what the average is. Do you know what the average is? Because I remember um, on one of the meetings they mentioned that every 15 years. Oh, every sorry. 15 years. I don't mean to spit on you. No, that's okay. I You're gonna get sick now. Uh. <laughs> so every 15 years. Um, I mean, I don't know. Don't quote me on this, but every 15 years. Every 15 years. They should Let's replace the fire engine. Yeah, I mean, they've been, I think they've been trying to replace it since the 2000s, so yeah. you could be right. Well, at any rate, here's uh, Marilyn Marler speaking about her frustration about the whole situation. And I usually try not to dwell on negative comments, but I just feel so frustrated about this whole situation, and I'm sure I'm not the only person who feels frustrated about it. Um, my frustration isn't directed at the fire department or at the administration. or It's just that we're in this, um, I feel like we're in a, in a culture in recent years of everybody being against taxes all the time and um, it's always a really ab kind of abstract discussion like that the, the taxes are awful and then a bridge collapses or we don't have a fire truck and then we have to do something that's really I, mean, I don't really I don't want to be sitting here and have to vote to just buy a one million dollar piece of thing that we didn't have in this year's budget it's not a comfortable feeling I, I feel a little frustrated that um, you know, on city council, I've known for, you know, we hear a few times a year during budget season that this ladder truck is a big issue, that it's going to, you know, needs to be replaced, et cetera. It sounds like it broke sooner than people mm -hmm. thought that it, it would. But I don't know if, if the public knew that it was that big of a deal. I'm, I'm not sure why the, you know, the message didn't get out. And then um, I, I've had also people in conversation the last few days say, well, you maybe the fire department's overfunded or maybe they could get rid of some other kind of ladder truck and maybe we only need one ladder truck because of the city. You said we probably need three ladder trucks and we're going to try to have okay, two so ladder trucks. So Marlon Marler basically talking about her frustrations with the whole situation. I mean, it is frustrating for a lot of people because, I mean, just think about it. Just naming off all the taxes that are coming up, yeah. all these bonds, all these special districts, all this stuff that are coming up. I can just name a bunch of them off the top of my head. Uh, school um, tech levy, mm -hmm. you know, both in... All the schools that 17 um, Missoula County public schools want to involve get like improve everything everything infrastructure Tech, technology and all that stuff and the that's the overall look of the school and they're they're right now working with the city and so far they looked at the budgets and it is 150 million dollar yeah bond and then the special district district is a, just another bond that they've been talking about for well pretty much uh, I would have to say nine ten months now yeah. I remember they first talking about in November from Missoula Live. And um, just, um, the oh yeah, um, Fort Missoula Regional Fort Park. Missoula. That's like $48 million? Yeah. So, so yeah, what? all this stuff adds up. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes, you know, choose your battles. 
take, take it one step at a time, we can go crazy and spend all our money at once. But, you well, know, I mean, you got to, like, look at all the stuff and say, okay, what's really good for the community and, you know, what can I afford? Because, I mean, just because, I mean, I'm a renter and you're a renter. And yeah. just because we're renting doesn't mean that the property owner that we rent from is going to jack up the prices for of our rent. It, that's how it works. Yeah, and well, the thing with uh, fire trucks and police force is that um, city council sworn to protect and serve the community, and these are essential right. needs for the community. Yes. So that's why uh, Mayor John Engen is talking about the necessity of a special district unit or why he thinks a special district unit is necessary. And Alex is talking about separating the police and the firefighters so we just fund the firefighters and not the police and their um, their need for a new evidence room. Yeah. So, well, let's listen to why Mayor John Engen thinks that a special district is totally necessary. So let's listen to it. I mean, it is neither accurate nor fair, and, and I appreciate your frustration. I mean, again, the challenge here, the reason we created the, reason we created the special district um, or attempted to create the special district and will continue to try to convince the public that the special district is the sort of tool we need to move forward is for situations just like this. So the alternative to the special district or the general obligation bond for a piece of equipment like this, which the city of Missoula will have one way or another because it's necessary for us to protect public safety and take care of the folks we swore to serve. Um, we're going to have this truck one way or another. The question is, how do we pay for it? And if we don't pass a special district or if we don't pass a, a general obligation bond, we will return to the general fund to find funding for that. And that means we don't do something else. And we've had conversation after conversation in this chamber over the course of low these many years, and these, those conversations happened long before any of us showed up about what matters, what are our priorities, and why don't we just not do this and do that. Well, what, what we have decided as elected representatives of the public is that we want to do all the things that we have done in our general fund. We want to continue to do those and we still need to do these other things as well. So it's not a it's not an either or. What we've decided to do is figure out an and. Um, and and we will figure out an and, I hope, and I'm convinced that the public will understand the need for the and. Remember that protest was not fifty percent. It was not 40%, it was not 30%, it was not 20%, right? So we don't know that a majority of the folks we serve are going to oppose a special district, particularly when we make the case to them. Um, so I appreciate the frustration and I apologize for that frustration. It is unfortunately what it is. Um, okay, so we, Mayor John Engen, talking about the protest period and how it really didn't represent the, uh, the people. Yeah. And, uh, Basically talking about how the special district is sort of like the way that they can easily fund things such as fire trucks. And he makes a good point. I mean, a lot of the general fund is put to <laughs> reconstruction and repaving all our roads because our roads get damaged. We live in a place where we spend so much money on just um, improving our roads and replacing a lot of those potholes. I mean, just filling potholes and just repaving a lot of roads that the money going into that you know, there's a lot more money going into that. Like yeah, if, yeah. We, if we lived in a place that didn't have to deal with um, the wear and tear of winter, then we would have a lot more money for these kind of uh, amenities. Absolutely. So that's kind of the point he's trying to make, is that he doesn't want to take out of, you know, rebuilding roads, because there's still roads that are out there that are just crap. Terrible. To drive on and everything. Yeah. Third Street's looking good. So the general fund goes to repairing the roads, but this special district will be an additional fund. It's a perpetual tax. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess it's still up for up for dis decision making yep. by the community on in November. But at any rate, here's Adam Hertz talking about um, his reason why he doesn't think the special district is a good idea and why he thinks that sort of basically city council, the city government has been kind of, their priorities have been mixed up. That's why the community isn't supporting this special district. So let's listen to Adam Hertz. I think sometimes the uh, anti-tax uh, 
argument is misunderstood in that I think folks in Missoula for the most part are glad to buy new fire apparatus and to fund our police department and to build roads and bridges, but uh, they're frustrated when the city says it can't afford those things and it spends or is willing to spend in excess of a million dollars condemning a private company uh, unnecessarily. And so I think we really need to take those kind of actions into consideration that people want essential services, but uh, sometimes essential services will begin to get attacked when a city doesn't have its funding priorities in order. And I think that's what we saw with the special district protests. I would gladly support the funding of this uh, with a general obligation bond. I would certainly consider a narrowly tailored special district. Uh, but I think in general, folks uh, were pretty upset that the city's funding priorities didn't quite meet uh, their funding priorities. Um, and then one last question I had for the department. Okay, so that's Adam Hertz, you know, talking. He always kind of comes back to the whole water issue of the city buying the water. What is it, Mountain Water Company? I don't know. It's some place based in California that bought out it. And it I don't think we even got a chance. They just kind of swooped up right underneath of us and just kind of like, oh, we got the water now. I was like, oh. Yeah, but, I mean, Adam Hertz always, he always talks about how it's wrong for the city to try to buy out that company. So he's he's against buying that company, where right. most city council is in favor of that mayor. Owning trying, our own river. Yeah, owning our own water. I yeah. think I totally get it on that aspect of it, but um, like like I said, you know, you know, some people are choosing the battles, and the majority of the city council wants this to happen. And heck, I'm pretty sure that Missoulians want this to happen. And as soon as they hear like, oh, you mean Missoula, no Missoula companies or anything owns our water? It's like based in California or whatever. Yeah. It's like, well, what's the deal? And these, and, our, and what we're talking about now doesn't represent the opinions of Charter Communications, yeah. the city of Missoula, or Missoula Community Access Television. And but, I'm trying to be as tongue-in-cheek as I can be. But, trying to be as unbiased, but I'm trying to get both sides of perspectives. Yeah. And I can agree with him, and I can disagree with I him. I can agree with, uh, the, in principle, of trying to buy out a, a private company, but, but I can totally also, other, in principle, I can agree with owning your own water, so. Yeah, it's just like, I mean... Waste. I mean, I understand it is a waste of money trying to buy out someone. Like the city government or whatever should never try to buy out anyone. It's like, oh yeah, I'm buying you out. It's like, uh, well, why don't we just wait until they are willing to sell it to us for a much, you know, steeper price? Hmm. Well, of course we already waited for so long. But anyways, I digress. There's just a lot of information, and the water issue is so big. I don't want to keep talking about the yeah. constant, constant tug of war that the city council has with trying to get back or yeah just in general trying to get their um river yeah well here's uh jason weiner and he is kind of talking on the same note he is talking about sort of how his vending machine it's kind of a rebuttal to adam hertz's comment that he just made so let's listen to jason weiner these things uh to the larger question about how we talk about government and what we do and these sorts of things, you know, the, the idea that the ladder truck just benefits tall buildings sort of speaks to this vending machine theory of government where I like walk up to the government and I punch some numbers on it and it like spits out the service that I require. And that's not what it is at all. Government is the thing that binds us together into a community as much as anything else. And we are all in it together. And I I would n not be comfortable having a special district purchase a piece of fire apparatus with just the revenue from some of the buildings in town that benefit from all of the fire department's work. I don't think that's the way to go. And I think in terms of you know, a misplaced sort of understanding of the enterprise that we're involved in that um, is right at the heart of it. All right, so that's Jason Weiner kind of speaking out against Adam Hertz's idea for a narrowly tailored special district. And here's Adam Hertz rebuttal to Jason Weiner. So let's listen to Adam Hertz. In terms of um, the accusation that I don't understand the enterprise we're running, I actually had a conversation with Chief Deal about the narrow, narrowly tailored special district. and. While he did explain to me that there are certainly smaller buildings and plenty of calls that do receive uh, benefit from the ladder truck, that there's also a concern that, you know, 
folks at the university can dial 911 and the ladder truck will show up to all of the very tall buildings that they've built and uh, the high density that they've created and at the same time um, you know not get any payment in return and not get any reimbursement to the city and obviously that's a constant struggle we have as a city is supporting a very large population uh, that pays nothing to the city in tax revenue mm -hmm. and so uh, I still think that's an idea worth considering um, and with that I'll call the question before this becomes a so. special district infomercial so that was Adam Hertz kind of rebuttal to Jason right. Weiner you know, but there's only two really tall buildings in Missoula, and that's Aber and Jesse Hall. Yeah. And there's no candles a lot up there. It's all hot plates. Well, there are hot... I mean, there's... But there's always a chance that There's fire. tall buildings downtown, too. Yeah, but the tallest ones are Jesse and Aber. Oh, yeah. They just look short because they're down the hill a little more from here, if you actually go up to them. I think... I don't know how many floors they have. They have a lot of floors. Like 10 floors. I've counted, <laughs> counted one of them before. It was yeah. like 10 floors. It's... Literally the tallest, I would have to say it's the tallest buildings. Yeah. But then there's really tall buildings, you know, the interstate bank, yeah. um, interstate uh, whatever bank yep. across from the Wilma. That's new, really tall, too. And a lot of their buildings underground is just as well. But, yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, we don't currently have a 100-foot ladder fire truck, so it is kind of an emergency in theory. If there was a fire in one of those buildings, we wouldn't be able to do anything about it. So, um, so tell me what you think. You know, everyone just go on to our Twitter page, but hold on. our Facebook page, and all that stuff. But yeah, go ahead. Let me finish. So, <laughs> they they ended up unanimous, unanimously approving the buying the new truck, and it it's going to be almost a million dollars, just short of a million dollars. And um, fortunately, Pierce Manufacturing, which makes the trucks, has just made one truck like this is very unusual for them because you have to order the trucks in advance so it takes like a year to order the right. truck but fortunately pierce manufacturing has a truck on the line with nobody wanting to grab it right away so it looks like we'll be able to it looks like we're getting that fire ladder truck for uh, nearly a million dollars <laughs> another perspective of it is like no one else wants it uh let's get um Missoula to get the sloppy seconds. <laughs> no, I, I... I don't know, I mean... I I'm, think they were saying if they didn't approve this right away, then someone, some other city would have taken the truck. And they're actually sending a firefighter all the way to Pierce Manufacturing in Wisconsin wow. to pick up the truck and drive it back to Missoula. <laughs> That's so, cray-cray. Yeah. <laughs> so, going back to what you were saying, uh, yeah, voice your opinion on our Facebook page. Boom. And uh, also, we have a Twitter, Twitter. account. Yep. Oh, oh that's, that's the wrong one. Yep. Twitter account. Here's our Twitter account. Yep, and you can find out all sorts of in lovely information about our show and more. And you can see old videos of French Friday and all sorts of just good old-fashioned stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, we post everything that we have on there. And, I, yeah, we have time. Do you want to do a um, Hallmark, Hallmark or Bullmark? And this is a segment that I do uh, once in a while. It seems I've been doing it every day, but still. It's basically about um, this Hallmark Channel original movies that are also on Charter Communications, and they have, like, the craziest synopsis, and so I make fun of the synopsis by either writing my own or just kind of rewriting their own, and it's up to pretty much anyone, everyone, the people in this room <laughs> especially, to figure out, is it completely real or is it completely Bullmark? All so right. this is Hallmark or Bullmark. I'm going to start with this one. <clears throat> a woman, Mia, goes on a trip after her latest breakup to, one of the, to the one and only city of love, Paris, France, only to find that some things never change about men. You can change the location, but you cannot change the men, according to Mia, and when all hope is lost, she bumps into a familiar face. Stephen is a traveling business exec whose job is riding on this partnership with the biggest firm in France. Steve has been in love with Mia since forever. Will Steve choose love for Mia over his career? And this is called French Connections. All right, guys, is this a Hallmark movie or is this complete Bullmark? I think I'm this gonna, is. I think this is a real Hallmark movie. Yeah, I'm gonna go along with that too. Are you guys sure? 
Yeah. It is completely bull mark. What? I made it up. You made it up? I completely made it up. Wow. I'm getting was, better at this. That's really good. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this next one. All right. This is another good one. Uh, 25-year-old Jennifer lives her life without commitment. Relieved her boyfriend isn't putting a ring on her finger. Her older sister, Mandy, married young and settled into a family life. Jennifer loves being carefree, but her mother, Catherine, sees Jennifer's ways as a fear of settling down and hatches a scheme to get Jennifer to watch Mandy's kids while she and her husband are away on vacation. It doesn't take long for Jennifer to realize that she has, has to go from cool aunt to strict parent if she's going to keep her sister's trust. But with a little help from the handsome new neighbor across the street, there's always love somewhere, um, Jennifer manages to put it together and to prove to everyone and even herself that taking responsibility can be rewarding. And this movie is called Three Weeks, Three Kids. All right, guys, I know that's a little long synopsis, but what do you guys think? I'll start with Aesop. Aesop. I think I'm going to go with real. It, you think it's real? I'm going to go with real, too, because the last one was bold. All right, it is real. All right. <laughs> I know, it's a, it was really long and it was really detailed, and I, I really couldn't dumb it down, so it's completely real. Um... All right, let's see. Okay, so this next one, Eddie, a disgruntled actor who wants to do more than just play, uh, play a character on a children's TV show, discovers life can change in a heartbeat when he actually gets in a car accident with a single mother, Annie Baker. In an unexpected friendship that develops between them, Eddie tries to help Annie's nearly blinded nearly blind daughter Taylor get an operation operation to restore her sight and obviously there's gonna be love or so whatever and the movie's called accidentally in love so what do you think Asa I'm gonna start with you nah you think it's fake yeah all right do you think it's fake? I think it's fake too it's actually real uh. it's an actually honest to god real movie and it's called okay. accidentally <laughs> in love Jeez. and it's all, right. <laughs> uh, all these are Hallmark original movies and the three weeks through kids is actually premiering sometime because that's the newest one, and actually, Love is like five years old. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> too real, and then the one you both got wrong, the French Connections. Yeah. It's completely oh, wow. bold. We kind of voted on the same line, so. We were I'm good. good. I mean, like, I, I I got Noel last on on Monday for the first time. She's always calls my BS. Huh. But yeah, I got her. I cool. Got her good. 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 All right. So, <laughs> um. I do have a PSA I want to show since I'm gonna. I might as well fill fill this whole entire hour. I, there's a PSA about Senior Corps' impact, and I'm gonna show this little PSA, and then we're gonna end with um, ASAP playing a nice little tune. But um, enjoy this little PSA. Boom. Montana and we are currently building our 46th home in Missoula County. We are building for the middle stat family and what's priceless about the RSVP volunteers is by using their labor on our build site and even in our office we're able to keep the cost of the home affordable for these families. They truly are priceless because they're um, allowing these families to purchase a home um, and keep it affordable for them. Come on and show me my new house. Here's one of the kids bedrooms and here's their other kids bedroom. And then this is our room. I'm glad to be a homeowner finally. I have had uh, a senior companion. We go grocery shopping to pick up my prescriptions, my doctor appointments. I help, Missoula Aging helps the state. We're all working together to keep these people safe and in their homes if we can. But the cost is so much smaller. It saves the state a lot of money, saves me a lot of money, and it's just nice to be independent and live independently. If I didn't have a senior companion, I would be really lost. I've been a principal for 20 years and I've worked with foster grandparents all of those years. The foster grandparents are really key in our testing program. You definitely see um, advances in, in academic areas because children um, benefit from that one-on-one -on -one attention they get. We do have a 20 to 1 ratio and so having another person in the room and other adults just make it a lot easier for us to help teach these kids. Oh, the progression, you can't believe it. I had one little girl that wouldn't even 
even say anything at Head Start. When I got to the end of the year, she was talking. She was using please and thank you. I, I volunteer four hours a day. I could leave for lunch, but those kids all want to eat lunch with me every day. Well, one of the things that I really like about volunteering with RSVP is that not only are we giving back to the community, but we're also um, saving money for the library where we work mending books. Because um, if we weren't there to mend books, they would just be thrown away. We were trained by a staff member there, and then she was able to go back to her regular job. We serve on the average of about 250 meals a day to our clients. And with, with my background as a physician for 40 years, my main function with Meals on Wheels is to do nutritional follow-ups on the clients to make sure that they are being adequately provided for. As an RSVP volunteer, I've used skills that I've uh, amassed over my professional career. People sit at computer terminals and I help them, um, if they're not computer savvy, to navigate the different plans on Medicare.gov. It's companionship, it's wonderful, it's, it's, it's you know, there's grace. When I get back to the house after visiting with them, it's just like, oh, that's good. <laughs> As a volunteer, it uh, puts some action in my life. I love the community, and I love the service that it does. Thanks, Asaf. Matt that was Asaf Adonai, and he is starting his own show. So let's talk about your show a little bit, because sure. I promised I'd talk about your show. <laughs> okay, and thank you. Thank I, you. of course, being <laughs> so nice, I wait until the last. That's time. okay, no problem. <laughs> so yeah, um, tell talk. You're, you're trying to do a revamp on the Lawrence Welk show. So. Yeah, it's it's a remake, updated version of the Lawrence Welk show, and I. I got the um, governor's ballroom. I'm going to take the pilot there. So I want to thank the um, AL. What is it? Oh yeah, ALPS Corporation for using their um, ballroom. That's great. And um, I'm just going to do all updated stuff, but in that Lawrence Book format. So this should be fun. Cool. Should nice. be a lot of fun. Nice. So um, it's going to be a variety show. I mean, um, yeah, what, so what can you tell me about it? Because um, some people might not remember the Lawrence Welk show that well. Well, Lauren, the original Lawrence Welk show aired in 1955. Of course, none of us were alive, not even me. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't even a dot in my mother's eye then. Yeah, definitely. But um, it, they didn't have, um, what do you call um, reality shows and stuff like that. It was just strictly all music, and so I want to mm -hmm. relive that. Like, for example, doing some Stevie Wonder or some Michael Buble in that style, I think it'll be fun. And Just you're going to get, you're gonna get um, musicians to play. Yeah, um, I've already been approached by musicians here, and I right. want to share this locally with the community mm -hmm. and try to redo this show. Yeah, where can people um, find you? I mean, like, people watching the show want to get in contact with you and say, hey, I want to play on your... Um, 
Lauren Smoke Show. I would just say my email address at asafadonai at hotmail.com, and that's spelled A S A P H A D O N A I at hotmail.com. Nice. So if you're a musician and interested in being a part of this Lawrence Welk revamp, uh, otherwise known as Music with ASAP. Yes, that's the name of the program. I want to acknowledge the um, the Missoula Symphony Association because I'm hoping they may let me use some of their players too, just at least for the pilot. Oh, yeah. And I have the set all done at the ballroom. It'll be an intimate living room setting, and there's a staircase where I can walk down and uh, <laughs> go to the piano. Something like the old Dean Martin show when he'd slide, right. slide down the pole, but I'm going to walk down steps. So right, cool. Fun. And uh, also, you want to, um, um, let's see, um, you already have a host. Yes, I have a ho host. Her name is Louise Bundy, and I also have a music director, uh, Margie Steffes, the two ladies I talked about the first time I was here. They're both helping me in. There's other organizations that are getting involved, like the 111 Boutique Store. They're going to be providing clothing and jewelry and of course, for this show. And, of course, the Missoula Downtown Association is... Yeah, they're connected with this, and the Missoula Cultural Council, Tom Benson. I want to really thank him, too. So all these uh, organizations are helping me to attempt to pull this show off. Nice. Very cool. Well, um, that's about as much time as we have, so look for um, ASOP's Outer Nines. Um, show coming yeah, up music in November. <laughs> right, around November. I'm, just, I'm looking at around the end of September to at least take the pilot. Mm -hmm. So, again, for more information about MCAT, you can log on to our Facebook page. You can go to our Wake Up Missoula page, or you can just in general type in mcatmcat.org and you can find out all the information about MCAT and our channel change. But I think this week is our last week on Channel 7. And wow. we're going to be on 189 next week, I think. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. And I'm Josh Manny. Yep. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>